Hello and welcome to one of my transcription explanation videos. I am the Scribe of Circles, and if you've seen one of these videos before or are familiar with my script, you can go ahead and skip forward and get to the design transcription itself, where I read the artwork letter by letter using this script. But if you're not familiar with the script or just want to hear me ramble for a bit, let's go ahead and get into how to use the circles key. So. This is set up in a grid. You'll notice we have rows and we have columns. And these rows are determined by the letter stems. So there are four different letter stems. There is a deep divot up in the top row, and that deep divot is more than 50% of a circle, like a horseshoe or an omega. So that's this one here. And then there's a shallow divot stem in the third row down here, and that shallow divot is like a bite taken out of a cookie, 50% or less of a circle. Then we have our completed circle stems in the second row and in the bottom row. And this second row stem is a completed circle, but it's inside the word circle. Whereas the bottom row, it's on the line of the word circle. And that can be anywhere on the line. It doesn't have to be centered like shown. Or that inside the word circle can be kind of more towards the middle, but just make sure you can tell where its position is, because the reading order for this script is bottom counterclockwise, like a time traveler going back in time. So, start at the bottom, go counterclockwise, like 6 o'clock, going around the clock. So, that is the reading order and the letter stems. Now that is how you get in the rows. Now to get the columns, we have dot modifiers and we have line modifiers. And that fine print up here matters. So these dots, they count at whatever letter they're closest to, whereas the lines, they count where they end on a letter stem. So where they connect and stop on the letter stem, which is again that black bit of our letters, so things are color coded. This blue one is the word circle, the black line is the letter stem. So if a line were to end on that letter stem, it would count for a line modifier, but if it goes through the letter stem, it doesn't count. So this line going through the letter stem doesn't count on the letter stem, but it does count on the vowel. So let's go down and talk about vowels now that we've talked about the dot modifiers, line modifiers, and letter stems. Vowels are these little guys, and they look similar to dot modifiers. The biggest difference being dot modifiers are filled in, or vowels, they're open in the middle. So an A is outside the word circle, and it is the only thing entirely outside the word circle. Everything else is somewhat touching or connected or inside the word circle. And our centered vowels, the I's, E's, and U's, are centered either on the line of the word circle, or they are in, uh, inside the word circle, but they're centered inside the consonant stem. So that's what this shows. This shows what a B stem would be with a vowel on it, an O, an E, or an A. Or this would be a J stem with the O, the E, and the A, so on and so forth. And then dif the difference between the I's and the U's are these lines. So this green line going towards the center of the word circle is what makes an I an I. A U has a line going away from the center of the word circle. So if this is the word circle, the I goes towards it, the U goes away from it. And similarly here, I, U, I, U. And that's relative to the word circle. So not the sentence circle or anything else. It's relative to the word circle. So sentence circle. Sometimes you can put a sentence circle around your word circle if you so choose, especially if you have punctuation, because that is where the punctuation marks go. They're all noted here. And a sentence circle, it can have these decorative divots to kind of fill an empty space between words, so long as you can tell that, you know, you have a sentence circle with a word circle. You could sneak in a secret word in the sentence circle if you wanted, but that is generally, you know, not something you would expect people to read. And then there's this start marker, which is optional. If you have the reading order in the typical bottom counterclockwise fashion on a design that will be oriented bottom with a top and a bottom, you don't need your start marker. You can put that there if it's something that'll spin, like a sticker, or if it's something that will, you know, have multiple kind of start places if you're writing a poem or something, you can uh, use the start marker as a bit of a roadmap. I tend to not use a start marker when possible because most of my designs are used as tattoos, which there's a person attached to a tattoo and they'll tell you where to start <laughs> and which direction is up or down. So yeah, the last bit is this letter stacking junk. And this is complicated. This makes a lot more sense in practice. And if I use letter stacking in the design, I'll go more into this in the specific design. Otherwise, the quick and dirty is letters 
in the same row can be stacked. That means they have the same letter stem. You read thin to thick, and same thickness means same letter. So you don't need to double up the modifiers. If you have like a double L, you don't need six dots because an L, L has three dots. It's just you have two of the same completed circle, like a double circle. That's an L. If you were to write an L and a J, then you'd need one line with the the three dots by it to be thinner, and then the J to be thicker because you read thin to thick. Vowels are read after consonants, so this would be a B before the O, E, or A. This would be a J, read before the vowel, so on and so forth. And a slash through a vowel, so like not a line modifier, not connecting to anything else, but just like a little hash line through our vowel moves it up one letter in the stack. So that is letter stacking, and letter stacking is tricky. If you'd like to learn more about letter stacking, you can read the full guide document here, or you can see the video tutorial here, and I go more in depth as far as the different ways different things can look in that video tutorial. And if you're more interested about the history and development of the script, these are the presentation slides me and Lauren give at panels at conventions and stuff where we talk about the history and development of the script, as well as its use on Doctor Who. Most people will recognize this script from Doctor Who, but... This is actually something from a couple of nerds in high school that Doctor Who has used. So big difference there. This is not something we took from the show. This is something the show got from us. So it's free for anybody to use, even commercially so. The show didn't step on our toes or anything. It's just really cool to say that, yeah, our silly little circle language is what the BBC has used to represent Circular Gallifrey in the language of the Time Lords on Doctor Who. But that being said, it's not official or canon. It is just, you know something some nerds made that the show has used, uh, which is a big deal. But I mean, the show's also used, like, dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are cool. They're not a thing from Doctor Who. They're a thing that Doctor Who has used. So yeah, this Circles script is what the Doctor Who show has used as Gallifrey. And so, yeah, that's that's the, the legalese, the technical history and stuff. There, there's there's screenshots and stuff in the presentation. If you're interested, just, just check that out. And then I have, of course, uh, some useful you know, contact and links. That's my email. Feel free to email me with questions. Then shermansplanet.com is Lauren's main site uh, where there's more information about what they've been doing as well as information on Gallifrey and Fair. And then, of course, my Etsy where I have all of the different options as far as custom stuff I can make for you with the circles. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into the design transcription for the specific design of this video. This design had a flower motif where I was requested to have flowers on the side. So I went ahead and sort of added a couple flowers kind of on the bottom and on the side. But these flowers are totally optional to the translation and are just some decoration that I added here. And this is the design itself. So you start reading at the bottom and you go counterclockwise. And that's true for both the words in a uh, letters in a word as well as the words in a sentence, which is why. If you imagine an infinitely large circle, you read left to right on a linear design like this. So here's our first letter. It's a shallow divot with one two lines on it, so that makes it a W. Then we have an E, then we have a double line making an apostrophe, and then we have two L's. A double letter can be stacked right on top of each other, one, two letters. So that would be W, E, um, apostrophe, double L, so wheel. Then we have a B with an E, and in this uh, kind of halfway, I have the E inside the B, but the B can be separate from the E like that. And then together. Together is the central word here, and I put a bit of extra, like, sort of filigree and, like, flowery sort of swirly stuff going around together to kind of tie everything together. And we have this shallow divot, which is the T, the O. This deep divot has one line making it a G, and then the E, a TH as a circle on the line of the word circle, E, and then an R. So together. And then last but not least, A, G, A, I, N. So this swirly line connects from the N to the I. So yeah, that is this design. And I hope you like it. So yeah, that's that. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Bye.